So before we actually set up the blower door, we need to make sure that the house is in wintertime conditions. This is going to be very similar to what we set up prior to doing the combustion safety testing. So that means all our interior doors are open. That means our HVAC is off. So again, I like turning the HVAC system off at the thermostat. For the water heater, let's go down there and make sure it's on pilot. You also want to make sure that your dryer and all your other exhaust fans are off. For your water heater, you want to make sure that it's on pilot. One trick that we recommend is that you take your keys and you leave them on top. That way you don't drive away without any heat to the water heater. The last thing you want to do is get a phone call in the middle of the night or the next day from the homeowner concerned that there's no hot water. And a really important step is secure all pets. Once you've decided that the house is ready for the blower door test or any safety concerns or anything, you want to find a location to put the blower door. Preferably, it'll be a central location in the house. However, if you have sliding glass doors or a really large, for example, wide door, then it's not going to fit, and you'll just have to choose any door that you can make the blower door fit into, which is why we're downstairs right here. So Glenn is going to show us how to set up the blower door, and while he does that, I will have a cup of coffee. The first step is putting the frame together, and that's true of this RetroTech door or the Minneapolis blower door. So what you're going to see is Glenn putting these four pieces together and then fitting it to the frame. You want to make sure that all the knobs are loosened. Then you'll see he's going to kick it out and fill it into the door. So he's going to start at the base and then make sure that that's nice and tight. And then bring it up. And as he gets a nice snug fit, then he's going to tighten the bolts right here. They're not going to pop the cams. You want to make sure that those are up right now as you see them but all four of the bolts are now tightened. So he's now going to pull this out, and he's going to put the red canvas frame over it. And there really are two techniques for doing this. One, you can lay the canvas on the ground if you have space, and then put the frame on it. I find that a little bit easier. That's the way I was trained. But Glenn, being a little bit taller than I am, uh, is able to do this all standing up. The canvas provides a nice, tight air seal around the door. So when you turn on the blower door, there's not going to be significant air leaks around that door. So as you see, as he's putting the canvas up, he's Velcroing all the different little pieces in there. Uh, one little tip is that you want to get this canvas on as tight as you possibly can. The looser it is, the more it's going to suck in as you blow air out. And that's going to create a sail effect and really create a lot of force to push the door in and have it fall in on you, which does happen a lot, especially for folks doing it for the first or second time. So now that the canvas is on, it's nice and tight, he's putting the frame back into the door, making sure that it's nice and snug. And what he's doing is he's actually now popping each one of these cams. Without popping the cans, it's not going to be tight enough, and it will fall out once the blower door gets turned on. So the next step is to hook up the hoses. You want to throw one hose outside and then have it at least five feet to the side of the house. So one trick on really windy days is to actually take a sponge, a Coke can, uh, your manometer case, and wrap a few feet of tube into it, zip it up, or just place it inside it and throw it outside. That helps prevent some of the spikes of the wind. Now before he actually puts on the fan, he's going to do this fifth piece. This is what the fan hangs from, and it also provides extra rigidity to the door, again, to prevent it from falling in once you turn it on. Once you have the frame totally set up, now you can actually put on the, the actual fan. And it's a very snug fit, so you're just going to have to wiggle it in. And you want to make sure that the elastic of the blower door actually snaps inside that fan. 
so it's a nice, tight air seal. Now the next step is to actually hook up the hoses. So for the RetroTech, it's really easy. The yellow hose is going to the yellow nipple. Again, we saw the red hose already goes outside. And then we put the, uh, the control, just goes in right there. For the manometer, again, it's very self-explanatory. Green hose to green, red to red, yellow to yellow. So now that you have the hoses hooked up, you want to make sure that the blower door is completely sealed off. RetroTech, you want to make sure that all of these are on and it's nice and tight, so we're in good shape. Once you've done that check, it's time to turn on your manometer and get your blower door running. So Glenn, why don't you explain how to do that? Okay, well first of all, we have to do what's, uh, we've got to establish our baseline pressure. So we've got to tell the gauge the pressure effects of the environment right now. So we're going to do that by pushing our baseline button and with this gauge, it tells you that it's, it's reading the data. And after you wait about 10 or 20 seconds, depending on how breezy it is outside, you hit the enter button. And it'll actually tell you up here what that number is. Now we're ready to do our blower door test. In most cases, we want to start with a completely open fan. So we're now ready to run the blower door. The one thing we want to do is change the gauge so that we actually read the flow at 50. So with this gauge, we're going to push this button, the mode button, until this says flow at 50 pascals. That will then account for if we cannot get to 50 here, at which point the gauge will then do the calculation to estimate what the flow would be at 50 pascals if we could get there. And in this case, we want, we'll ramp the, the fan up slowly. So I'm going to set the pressure to 25. And as it ramps up, once we get to 25, I'll go take a quick walk through the house just to make sure that um, there's no ashes coming out of the fireplace or anything like that that might be doing damage. So since the house was a little too tight for the open fan, we're now putting on ring A. So he just really quickly hooked it up. And then you actually have to change the manometer setting so it uh, actually inputs the fact that there's ring A on. So we started off with this reading open here. We'll hit the range config button one time. This will now read A, and we'll do the proper calculation for the size of the hole. We've put the ring in. We've set our gauge to reflect the A ring. We're ramping up to 50 pascals. And our flow is about 2660 CFM 50. That compares to the 1900 BAS that we got. It shows that the house is not too leaky, but there is room for improvement.